That's right. I mean, it took a long time for this theory of plate tectonics to come along. But anyway, Deleuze wants to create a philosophical concept out of that. Strata are real. Are those layers that are perfectly arranged, that we, right now I can't see any, but I'm sure during in our way here, any part of the mountain that gets blown, because those, those mountains are folded mountains, not volcanic mountains. Right? They are folded mountains, they were folded out of sediment, out of rocky sediment at the bottom of the ocean. So what, what, what Deleuze says is this, think about everything, not only geology, but life and, and society, as if they were just sedimentations, sedimentations not of pebbles, sedimentations of genes, sedimentations of costumes, just accumulations, things that become accumulated in time and become accumulating and, and becoming strata. So he talks about not only geological strata, but biological strata, social strata, psychological strata. And he draws them up here. So let me do, I'm going to draw them up to get where mine comes over. This is just a metaphor, guys. This would be geological strata. The first one that came into the planet. Once the bottom of the ocean had cooled enough, bacteria began accumulating also in layers. The very first forms of life were motionless bacteria that created colonies in, in the form of layers on top of sediment. In fact, if you didn't know there were bacteria, you probably think that they are just more sediment. Eventually, of course, they acquired movement, they, some of them became plants, some of them became animals. But nevertheless, for Deleuze, it's simply just another sedimentation or a slow accumulation of a certain material. In this case, genetic materials and their bodily expressions. So he talks of biological strata. And again, I'm quoting here from a chapter called The Geology of Morals. This is the chapter you have to read to get all the extra details. Biological strata are all the plants, the animals, the bacteria, and so on, that accumulate and form food chains in which some are on top and some are on another. They don't now, it's metaphorical because they don't look like layers anymore, although some of them do, microorganisms, but nevertheless, they're just something that has accumulated and has become sorted. Only what does the sorting in this case is not a river, but natural selection. Natural selection sorts genes from, you remember we talked about population thinking the first day, sorts genes that are better at survival right now from genes that are not better at survival right now, and sorts them every generation. There's also a sorting process that goes on that begins accumulating layers of plants, layers of animals, and so on, that he calls biological strata. Then he then talks, well, on top of that, social organisms from ants and termites to primates and monkeys, that is, organ organisms that now form social hierarchies, like pecking orders, or uh, different classes of ant, the queen, the, the, uh, the um, the queen, the warrior, and the, the worker, in which the animals now are sorted out into layers, he calls social strata. We humans, of course, also have social strata, social classes, hierarchies within the military, you know, infantry, sergeant, lieutenant, and so on, anything that in which you have been sorted out now by a meritocratic process or a series of tests that are assigned you to a particular rank, to a particular layer. And finally, in one of those species that have social strata, consciousness emerged, and we can now begin talking of psychological strata. Remember yesterday I said I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, the day before, that for Hume, the ego, the self, is just a, a hardening, a, a crystallization in a fluid field of raw intensities. 
as if something had coagulated in that field, as if, as if something had sedimented. And because as you live, more and more layers are added to yourself, the things you learn, the, 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 the friends that you've had, the memories you have, and so on, yourself as a crystallization, a fluid a, a, a field of sensations, can also be seen as a stratum. So, this is the world according to the list. Let me just eliminate this. It doesn't distract us. In a very, very rough way. This is the picture he paints for us in that chapter of that book, The Geology of Morals. And he says, as artists, as thinkers, who want to fly, who, you know, as thinkers and as artists, we want to get as many degrees of freedom as we can possibly have. Society tries to, on the contrary, stratify us. You are not a kid anymore. Don't play with those toys. Or you are not, a, you are not an adolescent anymore. It's time for you to get drafted into the military. You are not in the military anymore. It's time to, for you now to find a job and get married and settle down. Settle down like sediment settles down. So your life is something that by belonging to social strata, society is constantly trying to tell you, hey, sediment in layers. And you are not a child anymore. You can do now only teenage things. You're not a teenager anymore. Be, be drafted, join the military, do your military service. You're not a young person anymore. Get married, settle down, have kids. Begin the cycle all over again. And as artists, we are trying to say, hell no. I'm going to keep my childhood alive because I want all those memories from my childhood and the kind of attitude I had towards things of open curiosity. Everything amazed me and I could play with everything. You know, instead of accepting that now I'm of an age of which for that, that's inappropriate. And hell no, I'm not going to be drafted because I don't want to be layered infantry sergeant you know, lieutenant and so on, and they perhaps get killed in some jungle or in some desert. You know, I'm going to avoid the draft. And hell no, I'm going to postpone marriage. Because yes, I may one day want to get have kids, but I don't want to settle down just now. Because that would stop my lines, my, my degrees of freedom. You know, to, to summarize, as artists and as thinkers, we are trying to fabricate constantly on every day as many degrees of freedom as we can. And... By our bodies, by aging, the, uh, the societies that we live on, by placing us in different, in different categories, you know, now you're of an age to find a job, now you're of an age to get married, are constantly trying to decrease our degrees of freedom, right? They're constantly trying to tell us, you have a destiny. There is a certain path that you are supposed to follow, child, adolescent, military service, getting married, get a job, that's it. There is no such thing as exploring the world in a million different ways. You have to follow the stratified path. But as artists, we're constantly trying to de-stratify. Now we have a verb. Things become actual as stratifications on top of the plane of eminence. But artists and thinkers are those few humans who are trying to go against this process. We are trying to destratify. So Deleuze says, how do you destratify? He says that in that chapter. Says, well, first of all, begin finding, and again I'm drawing this as a pure diagram, begin finding in every stratum those parts of the stratum that are less stratified. They can be anywhere. You never know. You need to explore, you need to find it. Those areas that I just drew with, with the little you know, diagonal lines would be areas that are less stratified. If the, the most stratified things are linear things, linear patterns of becoming. The more non-linear you become, the more, for instance, chaotic attractors are definitely very destratified. So try to find dynamics and things that do that. What, for instance, well, when you look at geological strata, you can look at the mountains, 